Those who teach that Jerusalem was destroyed in 607 BC often say, in essence, you must choose. If you believe the Bible, you must accept the 607 date. If you reject 607 BC, then essentially, you are rejecting the Bible. In part 1, we examine the framework of the argument for 607. And then from part 2 onward, we carefully held up the 607 framework against the light of scripture. What did we find? In a nutshell, the 607 argument rests upon five assumptions about the 70 years of Jeremiah. First, the 70 years are said to be an exact rather than approximate period of time. There is nothing in scripture that would contradict this literal view. However, there is nothing in scripture that would support this. It is merely a matter of interpretation. Second, the 70 years are said to end with the restoration of pure worship, that is, the Jews returning to Jerusalem to rebuild the altar and make sacrifices. This is said to occur in September or October of 537 BC. However, Ezra seems to indicate that the Jews returned in the first year of Cyrus, that is to say 538 BC. But we cannot be too dogmatic about the matter. However, a return in 537 BC is conjecture and cannot be definitely proven. But it doesn't matter when the exiles returned. According to Jeremiah, the end of the 70 years elapsed when Babylon was punished in 539 BC. Third, the 70 years are said to begin the year Jerusalem is destroyed. However, according to Jeremiah, the 70 years would be a time when the nations would serve Babylon. When did the servitude begin? From history, we find that from the fall of Assyria to the fall of Babylon was 70 years. If the 70 years were an approximation, we find that there was a 66-year period from the Battle of Carchemish in 605 BC to the fall of Babylon, where the Babylonians held dominion over Judah and the nations round about. Fourth, the 70 years are said to be a period primarily centered upon the punishment of Judah and Jerusalem. While Judah was punished during the 70 years and had to serve Babylon, the same could be said of many nations who had to face the Babylonian cup of wrath. The nations had to serve Babylon during the 70 years or face the consequences. Fifth, the 70 years are said to be marked by a complete exile of all Judah's people to Babylon, leaving the land completely desolate and uninhabited during the 70 years. When we read the full context of Jeremiah, we find that the destruction of Jerusalem and the exile were not inevitable components of the 70 years. Destruction and exile was for those nations who failed to serve Babylon in their own land. We've also found that the exile started 11 years before Jerusalem was destroyed. And another wave of exiles occurred during Jerusalem's destruction, and yet another wave five years after. Furthermore, we found that 587 BC and not 607 are a much better fit for the destruction of Jerusalem when we factor in the books of Haggai and Zechariah. It boils down to this. We can categorize the various interpretations of the 70 years, the exile, and the destruction of Jerusalem into two categories. In one category, we have the interpretation that says Jerusalem was destroyed in 607 BC. In the other category, 587 or 586 BC. If, after examining the Bible, we are still uncertain on which interpretation to accept, what can we do? We must appeal to the historical record. We must compare both interpretations up to the historical evidence and find which interpretation holds up. Some might find such an idea heretical. However, consider this. Often we cannot properly interpret the fulfillment of Bible prophecy unless we compare how it played out in the historical record. The Bible contains no absolute dates in of itself. Events are measured relative to the reigning monarch. In order to date an event in the Bible, we must synchronize the year of the reigning monarch to the historical record. For instance, from the Bible, we know that Jerusalem was destroyed in Nebuchadnezzar's 18th year. If we can determine from the historical record his 18th year, we can then date the destruction of Jerusalem. 